Ladies, in today's episode, we're going to talk about how you can become a muscle mommy. Muscle mommy madness. That's right. Strong, muscular, fit, and healthy. That's what we're talking about in today's episode. I just learned that this term even existed it's yeah. the other day. It's making its rounds. I mean, you can had- just learn it a day. It came uh, uh, from a caller and then like what, instantly we heard somebody else ask a question related to it within the same day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is, I guess, this is what it's like to be uh, middle-aged. Yeah. Is that you f- <laughs> like, we're, we're a little behind terminology. You find out about it later, you know? Well, and here's a, here's what I think is really neat about this is that I think this is an example of, what the, the the changing of the tide or the shift totally. in, in the culture totally. of, I think more and more women um, are understanding the value of having muscle and lifting weights. I think for the previous decades, it was all about being lean and tone and skinny. Like that yeah. was kind of- and muscle was something to, to you don't want because it makes yeah, you bulky or bigger. It makes you look manly. And so I think that that is changing so much that you have terms like muscle mommy that are floating around now that are becoming popular that- you have, uh, you know, women saying, "Hey, I, I do want muscle. I want to, I want to be muscular. I want to have great, strong arms and built legs and glutes." I think that's becoming more and more popular. It is. I, 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 I want to say that the beginning of this trend, because I mean, we trained people for a long time. I started training people over two and a half decades ago, and uh, I've been preaching this. I know you guys did as well. Uh, I've been preaching this for a long time, and it was always an uphill battle. Yeah. But once the female clients. Uh, started to see the results and feel it, then they were they were sold, right? So it didn't take me long. It would typically take me 60 to 90 days. And then I'd have um, a, a disciple. And they were like, okay, I see what you're talking about. Like my metabolism is faster. I mm-hmm. look way better. I feel way better. It's just way easier than what I used to do. football traps like I thought. Yeah, yeah, this is way easier than what I used to do when I used to just try to sweat every calorie off. And I had to eat su- super low calories. Now I'm eating more and I'm leaner and et cetera, et cetera. But I remember... I th- I want to say that this trend started when CrossFit female CrossFit athletes yeah. started to gain some traction on social media. I think mm-hmm. so too because they were like strong and fit. And this is before CrossFit got extreme. <laughs> and a lot of women looked at those women and said, "Wait a minute, like yeah. that looks great. I want to look like that. What are they doing?" And then these women are like, "Well, we're deadlifting, we're squatting, we're benching, we're overhead pressing, we're cleaning, like uh, like we're doing these these bodybuilder weightlifting powerlifting movements." That's how we got these physiques. And a lot of women were like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah, it's empowering. You know, you see <coughs> that and they're strong and, um, you know, doing doing explosive movements and, you know, are very athletic. And so there's definitely, there was an appeal in that direction, uh, you know, be, besides just the physique, which I know was selling it a lot. Now, if you guys were to go back and, and recall those, because back, obviously communicating this today, a bit easier. Uh-huh because of the popularity of terms like this that are coming around. But if you were to go back, um, you know, 15, 20 years ago, when we were communicating this to your average female client, is there an, an order of operation or is there certain things you try and drill home first? Like when you think about yeah. communicating this information? Yeah. As a, as a trainer, you guys know this, uh, one of your jobs is to sell and be very effective at selling the ideas that you're trying to get your client to partake in. Because if you can't sell them, you don't have buy-in, they don't do it, and then forget it. So there were two celebrities that I would use. Because back in those days, you know, we're talking about the 90s, early 2000s, we didn't have a lot of female representation for, like, strength training. Yeah. It was bodybuilders, and nobody wants to look like a bodybuilder. Like, these are these are women that do look like, like dudes in terms of muscularity. So I'm like, I'm not going to use them as examples. But there was Sarah Connor from Terminator oh, 2. Yeah. I've used that one, yeah. Yeah, where she was, you know, doing the pull-ups. And a lot of women were like, wow, I want to look like that, right? G.I. Jane. G.I. Jane was the other one. Demi Moore. Uh, where Demi Moore, and she looks really fit. And when we're like, wow, I want to look like that. Obama's arms. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that one a lot. Yeah, that <laughs> happened. Um, so I used those examples. And I'd say, well, they lifted weights to look like that. And then I would sell it by saying, by talking about metabolism boosting and fat loss. And I'd say, look. Um, you could, you could try burning the calories off, you know, an hour of cardio is going to burn like 300 calories. I could get your body to burn 300 calories a day on its own extra just by trying to build a little muscle. No problem. So imagine doing cardio every day, but you're not how much easier that's going to be. So that's how I would sell it. And then I would say, uh, look, we are trying to build muscle. You're not going to wake up tomorrow with all kinds of muscle all over your body. So if we ever get to the point where you're like, that's enough, Sal, you tell me. And then we'll change your workout routine. And I knew, and that would sell them to, to try. And then they get the results and they'd feel it and they'd be like, oh, this is great. 
Let's mm-hmm. just keep going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, did you guys use similar strategies? Yeah, I think also I think uh, <clears throat> sharing on what it does metabolically to them to add muscle, right? Because I don't care if you're male or female. Everybody likes the idea of being able to have a glass of wine or a little bit of dessert or mm-hmm. have the Friday night dates and not feel like the, the food or alcohol sticks right to you. Yeah, so I yeah. used to love to use that and explain like the value of, man, if we really go on this muscle building journey and we actually add five to eight pounds of muscle on your frame, one, it's not going to look like that sounds like five to eight pounds of muscle distributed over your entire body is going to be very, very small amount that you'll even be able to tell a difference as far as like looking muscular and what that will do for you metabolically. Yeah. Uh, is, and, and what that will do as far as your, your freedom with nutrition, I said, Man, that in itself is so rewarding because I think a lot of both men and women can identify with that uh, or relate to that feeling of man, I just that one day I ate that and I woke up and of felt course like it was stuck yeah. stuck to me. If your calorie burning is uh, <clears throat> tied to you having to move, the second you stop all that movement, it's gone. So you go on vacation, you stop doing all that cardio, it's gone, and now you're eating more calories. You're going to gain more body fat. If the calorie burning is not stuck to your movement, but rather the amount of metabolically active tissue that you have, uh, and you know your, your body's burning it on its own, well, now you go on vacation. Okay, you're not doing some of your workouts, but the workouts don't burn many calories anyway. You've already got a fast metabolism. It takes a long time for you to lose muscle if you stop working out. Uh, so you go on vacation, you enjoy yourself, you come back. Oftentimes, you feel great because you needed the rest. And you're shocked at the fact that you didn't gain any body fat. I also read something years ago. Maybe Doug can look up and see what the number is today or not, but I, re- I remember being um, totally surprised by this number. Like, I think it was like the average woman gains weight on like 1,700 calories. Yeah. So it was like a really low number. I remember number. reading that. I, I don't remember exact, the exact number. I know it was under 2,000, so it was a, wow. a low number. <clears throat> and so that's why I like, just imagine that. Like you 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 barely eat 1,700, 2,000 calories. You put on body fat. You go out to eat and you're screwed. Well, I, I mean, that was a commonality with most of my female clients is just, they were always running a deficit. It mm-hmm. was just like, it was never uh, a fed situation. So just to, to shift that a bit and then also focus more on strength training was such a drastic shift of what they've ever done. So it was like, it, it didn't take long to kind of convince if they stuck with it again, you have to like sell it a lot and you got to kind of paint the picture um, for them to adhere to it. But it's like, man, almost immediately within a few weeks, they would see changes of their body. Yeah, and there's a couple things to consider. One is uh, muscle's very dense. So it takes up roughly, a little less than this, but roughly about a quarter of uh, less space as an equal amount of body fat. So 10 pounds of muscle versus 10 pounds of body fat. If you were to lose 10 pounds of body fat and gain 10 pounds of muscle, you'd be smaller. You would lose uh, close to about a quarter of the size. Okay, so you've lost inches, but you weigh the same. Like that's... Pretty amazing. Today's giveaway, MAPS Anabolic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you do all those things and you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, uh, because this program is talking about ways you could become a muscle mommy, here's what we did. We took some of our best muscle building programs and made them 50% off for this episode only. Check this out. MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Strong, MAPS Powerlift. 50% 50% off, limited time. If you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, click on one of those programs, and then use the code MM50, so MM50, for that discount. All right, here comes the show. You mentioned it was empowering. There's two factors here, or two components of, of what make this so empowering. The first one is women oftentimes, because uh, of how they've been conditioned, because of the way that fitness is being communicated in the wrong way, they're constantly trying to eat as little as they can. Mm-hmm. It's always a thing. It's always a thing. Oh my God, I ate too much. Oh my God, I eat less. And you know, I, I should feel hungry all the time. It's this thing that they have to go through and they have to deal with, right? Well, how empowering is it that you can eat when you're hungry and not gain body fat because your metabolism's fast? Yep. So there's that. Then there's also this. How many times did you have a female client who never st- strength trained, watch their strength go up, and then come to you and tell you, I feel independent and empowered. Like this feels good. I had a yeah. female client, I'll never forget, she was an executive uh, at a tech company, never lifted weights. All she ever did was uh, group X classes and yoga. I convinced her to lift to, to do strength training. She came back from a business trip. She used to travel to China all the time. She was petite. She was tiny. She was like 5'1". 
And she comes back from her trip and she's like, Sal, she goes, this doesn't sound like a big deal to you, but to me, this is a big deal. She's like, I travel all the time for the first time. And I don't know how long I put my bag in the overhead compartment uh, of the plane. Mm -hmm. She goes, I travel alone for business. I always have to ask a guy to help me on the plane, a random person. She's like, I don't have to ask anybody anymore. Do you understand? Do you, do, you, do you understand how great that feels? How empowered I feel? Well, that's what it feels like when you get strong. Yeah. Um, and that's what strength training provides. You're just more able. So let's define this term muscle mommy. We went on social media. We looked it up. Okay. What are, what are people saying? What does this mean? Basically it's a woman that's not afraid of building muscle and strength. Someone who loves the bench press, deadlift, squat, and overhead press. Those those oh, yeah. lifts, by the, the way, were, were specifically listed when I looked this up. Like oh, yeah. women who like to bench, squat, deadlift. I'm like, oh, this wow. is one, yeah, this is awesome. I definitely have seen it a lot in the women's powerlifting movement as well. So, yes. Yeah. These are women that are strong, fit, and here's my favorite part, healthy. So what does that mean? They're definitely lean, but they're not like emaciated or so lean that they lost their period or their, their hormones are off or they look terrible. These women are fit, strong, healthy and lean. And this is what they're talking about when they say, um, muscle mommy. So that's pretty awesome. This is yeah, an awesome cool. movement. Now I hope it doesn't get distorted and crazy like many fitness movements do. But as of right now, we're, we're totally support of this. So the first go-to move for me was, and, uh, and still is to this day is to introduce lifting heavy. That's it. Mm -hmm. Um, for year, for decades, uh, women have been marketed to that, you know, lightweight, lots of reps, circuit training, curves, bullshit, um, heart rate up, body pump classes, turbo kickboxing. I mean, this has been Thigh springs. the cornerstone yeah. of how to attract women into the, the health and fitness space. And it's a bunch of bullshit, first of all. And one of the best things that you can do to start to shape and sculpt their body and or speed the metabolism up, burn body fat, all the things is to get them to start lifting heavy. And what I love that is that it almost always is so novel to that client that their body, in, before I even manipulate anything else, automatically just starts yeah. responding just from lifting heavy. Yeah. Now, this has its origins. The the, the lightweight, the the pink, purple dumbbells, the circuit training, the, you know, the equipment that's marketed to women that tones but doesn't build type of deal. That has its roots in the uh, the marketing of the gym industry. So the gym industry, when it first started, it they were gymnasiums. So these were uh, people that, like a lot of them were gymnasts. Then it evolved and became kind of these bodybuilder type havens. And uh, at the time, the only known bodybuilders was people like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was like a bunch of guys. Women didn't go to gyms uh, when they were first kind of emerging. They just didn't go. Why am I going to go there? I don't want to look like Arnold. I don't want to look like these big sweaty dudes. Um, you know, it's, it's, that's not for me. So gyms, in order to become successful businesses, realize we got to like, we need to attract the, the other sex. We have to attract the largest consumer base. Most, yeah. uh, most products, by the way, the consumer base, that's the largest is are, are women. Women are the, are, are known as the consumers. If you want to build a successful business, you, you, you want to be able to attract them. So gyms are like, okay, how are we going to do this? We've been talking about how lifting weights makes you look big, veiny, and scary. I know you can still lift weights. You just do it this way. Don't lift anything heavier than two pounds. Do 5,000 reps. <laughs> Make it burn. Don't rest in between sets. That's what makes you big and bulky. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to sweat. Burn. Oh, you feel the burn in your muscle? That's because you're burning body fat. That's not why muscles burn, it's, by the way. It's almost so effective in not building big bulk muscle that you build no muscle. Yes. <laughs> that's, yes. that's how effective that is. You build zero. I, I've <laughs> yeah. talked about this before. It's my, 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 the very first gym I worked in was an old 24 hour Nautilus. This is before, and then, uh, you know, they, they had switched to 24 hour fitness, but it was an old club. It, I think it first opened, I want to say 1983. They had a women's only area back in those days. That was one way that gyms attracted they women. They still got this. You know that? I know. I just signed up with the new golds over. And they have it? Really? Oh, yeah. The new golds over in Gilroy has a woman's wow. only room. Wow. I was so surprised. Out of, a, out of a gold gym, I was so surprised to see that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, 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 there's some market demand. Back in those days, it was a huge market demand. No way a woman would work out next to a bunch of dudes. There was none. All the chicks were out in there where everybody else was. I wonder there if was it's like, an old golds. It, I mean- 
No, because it's uh, it's brand new. It's like completely weird. Like, I mean, they might have converted like a, a different like grocery store or something, and then they just left it like that. Yeah. And maybe someone or maybe thought, they bought an old gym and then just yeah. Made. Maybe someone thought that was a good idea, but I was blown away to see that. Yeah. And it's it's a trip if you guys get a chance to go there because it's a nice. It's actually a nice Gold's gym, but that room i've only seen uh a couple times one or two people in there and it's like a total waste of space and then all the chicks are over in the then they actually have a dedicated which is really cool like a dedicated leg room which is by the way twice the size as the woman's little fitness room is this right. huge leg room that has got all the the leg press squats hamstring stuff that has four squat racks and platforms awesome and, and mm. all the girls are in there <laughs> yeah because they know now yeah that's, that's what's the fact yeah. boy that has changed a lot yeah. oh it has that's why it's interesting to see because you know? i so i used to work out at this 24-hour nautilus as a kid in the mid 90s and then when i got a job there as a personal trainer I finally worked there, and back in those days, 24-hour Nautilus or fitness was open 24 hours except for Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. It would close. So it was like midnight on Friday, 10 on Saturday, and 8 uh, on Sunday, I believe. And so I was there closing the gym one day, and I was like, oh, I wonder what the women's – because I never walked in the women's only workout area. I wonder what that looks like. And I walked in, and I remember as a trainer, I was like, okay, there's dumbbells in here. The difference is these are coated in whatever that polyurethane, you know, vinyl – purple materials, purple and pink. The machines were identical to the machines that were on the general area. The difference was the upholstery was pink or purple. Mm. So they were like, here's your female equipment. We changed the color for you. How condescending, right? And yeah. now you can work out on this. <laughs> and I remember being like, this is ridiculous. Now, of course, they, they you know, since remodeled and, and got rid of that, but that's, you know, how they marketed. And so for a long time, the myth was promoted that, and then of course you have female bodybuilders who are genetic freaks. They make, they're like, they 0.001% of women can even build muscle like that. And then they're on top, on top of that, they're on male hormones. Yep. So women look at that and that's evidence. Uh oh, that's what'll happen to me if I, so women were scared. The truth is this, you want to get the benefits of strength training, the sculpt, the firmness, the fast metabolism, the hormone benefits, the shape. You got to lift heavy weights. You got to yep. work out like the bodybuilders do. You got to work out like the power lifters do. You got to lift heavy, lifting heavy, your body tries to adapt to the stress. The reason why your body changes with exercise is what it's doing is it's trying to get better at what you're asking it to do. And the way that your body gets better at lifting heavy weights is by building more muscle. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see visible change, you have to embrace heavy lifting. <clears throat> now, I do want to say this. Heavy is relative. I think sometimes people think heavy like I'm going to hurt myself. No, no, no. That means you're lifting too heavy for yourself. Heavy is relative. Heavy basically means work out with a weight that is difficult for you to perform between five to let's say 15 reps. Mm -hmm. More than that, now it's not really heavy anymore. So five to 15 within that range, and, and it's challenging with good technique and good form, that's heavyweight. So that's now, what how'd you, you guys on. approach that? Because you know, if you get somebody that has just done nothing but let's say like 15, 20 reps, and they're always doing you know the high rep, like low amount of weight, it's a bit of a, a learning curve there to, to be able to now <coughs> pick a weight and pick something that's going to, let's say we, you, you keep them around five reps and, and we go for low reps. And it's it's very much like it's going to take a while for them to understand like yeah. it's a completely different intention going into that type of lifting because, you know, a lot of times they'll pick like similar, maybe a five pound heavier uh, type of load. And, and really it's a lot of coaching needs to happen. Yeah. Right. Gr great, great point. And you little, you just took me back to these, these moments of doing this. And I'll tell you what I used to do. So, and cause you're right, Justin, what you, you tell, uh, uh they do seven pounds. You go, let's, let's lift heavy. Okay. Yeah, I'll go to, go to nine. Yeah. 10 yeah. or 12. They barely go up a little bit. So <laughs> I actually, I I'm telling them to add weight until they can't do five. Mm. I'm going to, I want you to keep putting weight on you until, feel it. until you struggle to get four. So I, I want you to With feel good form. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. of course. Yeah. And that's what we've defined failure before. So if you listen to the show long enough, failure is not you falling or collapsing or dropping the bar. It's you and the inability for you to complete the rep with perfect form. That's it. So as soon as there's any sort of breakdown in form and technique, you probably could squeeze out 
one or two or three more reps, you know, you with, don't. with battle, you don't, you, yeah. you, you, you stop there. But I, I'm encouraging my female client to keep adding weight until she finds a weight that she's struggling to get to five. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now you know what it feels like to really try and push a heavy, a heavy load. That's exactly what I said. Otherwise, you're right. If you have them choose a weight that, okay, they were, they were always working out the 15 to 20 reps. So yeah. they kind of know like, oh, this is what my shoulder press is. Oh, this is what my whatever is. Okay, now my my coach or trainer is telling me to do five reps. They go, oh, they add like five pounds to it or whatever. When in reality, many times they can do like double the weight that they were doing for fifteen. Dude, reps. you just brought me back. Mm -hmm. I, I had a I had a family member like that, and I wasn't training her, so I had to kind of coach her like just verbally. And I said, no, no, lift heavy. You got to lift heavy. And she comes back. I'm like, how was the workout? She's like, I was good. You know, I, I definitely went heavy. I'm like, so what did what did you do? She goes, well, normally I do the five pound dumbbells for curls. I grabbed the seven pound dumbbells. I say, yeah, no, that's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, you, you, that you you just went from doing thirty reps to twenty eight reps. Like, let's we need to go a little heavier. So I tell, I'll advise people if you're not used to this, add do a set, add weight, do a set, add weight, do a set, add weight. You can do it incrementally. Right. You could add five pounds at a time, but until you get to the point where, like Adam says, it's like a struggle to get like five reps. Well, and then I would also remind them that. Um, these numbers that we use, this five, 10, 15 rep, or they're arbitrary numbers. Like there's nothing wrong if you chose a weight that you could only get three up. That's okay. Like, and, and yeah. so if I've got somebody who I'm trying to teach to lift heavy, ideally we're trying to find a weight that you struggle to get right to five. That's like a perfect guess. But the reality is, and this is both men and women, still to this day, I have this challenge. There's many times where I'm going into a set. I know it's a heavy lifting day. My goal is to get five out, but I only get three. It doesn't mean it's a worthless set. No, it's a good a, set. That's a great set, especially when the focus and the goal is to go heavy. So just because we say five by five or that we had the goal is to hit five reps, you if you did it, if you picked a weight and you're like on rep two and you realize, oh shit, this was a little more than I thought, I'm not gonna be able to get five. That's okay. Yeah. Stop at three or yeah. four. Nothing wrong with that. But now now your mindset is in the in the in the area or the arena that I want it to be in, which is really struggling to get those five reps out, and that's what lifting heavy feels like. Well, here's a, another sort of a silly thing that I remember uh, going through that whole process, picking weight, and we're doing the same thing that uh, you guys are kind of bringing up. Um, but there's a moment where it was like. Uh, my client, she stopped and she was like, oh, I just feel like I'm making all these like, grimaces and, you know, yeah, yeah, like I'm, 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 things are coming out like grunts and like, Argh! I'm like, yes, that yeah. like that is part of it. And that's why, you know, it's uh, honestly, it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of a deterrent. But then once you understand that, that to be able to brace and to keep your body tight, like to be able to breathe through that, like that all has to kind of work out where, um, you know, sometimes you might make a noise and that's totally okay. You're going to make faces. Yeah. You're going to make ugly faces, faces, but by that's the, all right. By if the you're way, not, you're also probably not going hard enough. You, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 By the way, this doesn't count if you don't rest in between sets. I got to make sure I say that. So if you're lifting heavy, that means you do a set and you rest for like two minutes Yeah. and then you do another set. If you do a bunch of exercises in a row, even if they're heavy, with no rest, you've defeat. You've now turned your strength training into cardio. So, it's a set rest for two minutes or three minutes, and then repeat it. That's how you build muscle. That's how you get what we're talking about. All right, the next point is the most challenging one for a lot of women who have never done this. You have to eat in a calorie surplus. You have to go in a bulk. I know I say the word yes. bulk, and everybody's like bulk. I don't want to look bulky. Now look, here's the deal. We could send a signal to build muscle all day long with heavy lifting. You could do it perfectly. If there's nothing to build the muscle with, it ain't going to happen. Okay. So you could send the plans to build the house and they can be perfect. And then you can have the workers ready to go and you can give them no bricks, no wood, no nails, no tools, and you're going to have no house. So in order to build muscle, in order to make this work, you have to eat a little bit more than is required to keep your body where it's at now. So that means you have to eat a little bit more. And part of this is you have to eat a high protein diet. That if you don't do those two things, building muscle is going to be uh, almost impossible, if not impossible. This this is the the biggest challenge of all the tips around this yeah. episode, and is uh, almost always the reason why a a client is following this protocol of lifting heavy because, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to trust this process or I, I believe the guys that told me, or I believe the client or the, the coach that told me to do this. And so they lift the heavy weight, but then they don't see the results that we're talking about from it. It's 
almost always because of this. Yes. Because yeah. they're not they're getting underfed. enough protein. They're not getting enough protein or they're not eating any calories or plus, but most often both. Mm -hmm. They're not eating enough calories to for what they're burning and what they're doing. In addition to that, they're also not hitting enough protein intake on a consistent basis day in and day out. And it is, it's difficult to to get to overcome that hurdle because there is an, it, it, a little bit of this awkward phase of when you first start this, which is the initial increase of calories and protein with the lifting heavy does cause this, oh, my my pants are fitting a little bit tighter. Yeah. And and then that's where the mind fuck comes. And that's where the bailout comes to. It's just like, okay, I was trusting the process with the coach all the way up into that point. As soon as my my pants got tight to fit mm -hmm. or my shirt feel, didn't feel right, yay, freak out and go the other direction. And you've got to trust the process. You've got to understand that you've increased calories. A lot of times both carbs came with that, sodium came with that, water probably up a little bit. So you're going to be retaining a little bit of water, which by the way, comes right out of you within 72 hours so it's not a big deal we can go the other direction really easy and right now this is part of that process of starting to build that muscle and build that metabolism you've got to be okay with getting through that mental hurdle also you know 70 percent of a muscle if you look at a muscle 70 percent of it is fluid it is 70 percent of it is non-muscle fiber fluid and structures in the muscle if you increase your calories so that you're eating a little bit more calories than you're burning, so now you have enough, you have something left to build with, and you're trying to build muscle, your muscles are like sponges and they will absorb and hold a little bit more fluid. This is not the same as bloat. I want to be clear. Bloat is water outside the muscle. It's water that makes you look smooth and puffy. Water inside a muscle makes the muscle look more full, more, defined. more round, more defined, more toned, right? More, more firm. That's what happens. So you might put your pants on and, and, and this is another thing working against women. Women's clothing is not designed for women with muscle at all. Yeah. So now you put your jeans on and your thighs feel tighter because why your quads built a little bit and they lifted your jeans feel tighter up near the butt area. Why your butt just lifted and got a little bit rounder. So it's not the waist, by the way, pay attention to the waist. You'll notice that that hasn't changed, right? Your shirt all of a sudden might feel tighter in the shoulders. Why your posture just got better. Muscles are a little fuller. Don't worry. You're not like just big, broad shoulder person. So um, that's a very, very good point. Yeah. And this is why, I mean, and the, the next point we get into that we, we tend to, to tell clients that we are doing this with is to throw away the scale. And, uh, and this is where I too, I just, I, I tell them to be objective. I said, take a picture of yourself in your bikini front side back, check it right now, the end of the month, check it again. At the end of the next month, check it again and be honest with yourself the way you look. Don't go off of a scale thing. Yeah. Don't freak out if you've noticed your pants or your shirt. You're, you're, you're sculpting. You're changing your body. So you're not going to fit in those same skinny jeans when you had no muscle on your body anymore. So don't use that as a unit of measure of success and in, in your progress. Be honest with yourself and take a look or use somebody else who is not going to be judging you the same way and be, you know, ask a, a boyfriend, a husband, a girlfriend and be like, Hey, do you think that I'm making improvements here? Yes. And I guarantee yeah. they're going to tell you, yes, yes, you look better. Yeah. Real quick with the, with the bulk, uh, high protein is about a gram of protein per pound uh, of body weight. So when I say high protein, that's what I'm talking about. Not that you added an egg to breakfast or you put cheese on your sandwich now. So it's, it's a decent amount of protein. It's pretty hard to hit, but the scale tip is huge because the scale just tells you total mass. Yeah. It doesn't tell you. It's not the whole story. What that's, what's, what it's made up of. I mean, you could cut your leg off and then you've lost weight. Is that good? Are you happy that you lost 15 pounds? No, you, you lost your leg, right? Uh, muscle looks very different than body fat. A, a 130 pound, 30% body fat female who let's say is 5'4 looks very different than a 5'4, 130 pound female at 19% body fat. They would weigh the same exact on the scale. But if you looked at them, they did not, they don't look the same at all. In fact, most people who have no idea about fitness and muscle would look at the lean woman and guess that she weighs probably a hundred pounds. I used to do this to sell gym memberships. I've told the story at least a hundred times of the podcast, going to tell it again, just in case someone hasn't heard it. But I used to have a female trainer that used to work for me and I used to use her to sell memberships. Uh, you know who she is, um, mm -hmm. Homera. And she was this really fit, sculpted, strong trainer. And she was tiny. She was, I think like five, two, uh, but she weighed a lot more than she looked because she had muscle. And I would have, you know, these women that would come and get a tour of the gym and I'd show them the weights and I'd talk, do the spiel. And they'd be like, no, 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 I don't want to lift weights. I don't want to get big. I don't want to whatever. 
And then I'd do this challenge to them. And it was, it was kind of a sneaky way of getting them to buy a membership. And I'd say, look, I tell you what, I'm going to bring in one of my female trainers. If you could guess within seven pounds, I think it was, or 10 hmm. pounds of her body weight, I'll give you a free membership for a month. But if you can't, then I want you to take what I'm saying. I want you to consider what I'm saying. Seriously. She, and she would walk five foot two, lean as hell. And they'd be like, uh, 90 pounds, a hundred pounds, like, Stand on the scale, 130 pounds. And they would blow them away. They'd be like, what's wrong with the scale? I'd say, go ahead and stand on the scale. Test it out. And they'd test it out and be like, and I'd say, muscle is dense. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It looks lean. It looks sculpted. Mm -hmm. And then I would love that my favorite part would I'd ask the trainer what she would eat in a regular, you know, uh, on a daily basis. And it would blow the person away by the amount of food that this little girl would eat. And I'd be like, she got a fast metabolism. Yeah. That's what can happen. So the scale lies. Now it tells you something but it doesn't tell you everything. And so you have if you're if you're if you're triggered by weight, you're triggered by gaining weight, you're always on a diet, you're always trying to lose weight, you're scared to lift weights, you don't want to get bigger. Take the scale, throw it away or put it in the closet. Promise yourself I will not weigh myself for an entire 30 days and I'm going to trust the process. Yeah. And then, you know, watch what happens. Yeah. I mean, ideally you focus just purely on strength and like improving in the gym. However, you know, some people are still going to want to have some tangible metrics around that. And so this is where like, if you want to be simplistic <laughs> with this, and I actually like Doug does this a, a lot where he does a circumference measurement just around the waist yeah. or something very simple like that, um, where you don't want to gain any size, right? You don't want to see an increase there. The waist is a good place. Um, but everywhere else too, I mean, if you want to see trends and see how your training is affecting your muscle growth and, or, you know, like you, you want to see like how your body is sort of changing and morphing. I do like circumference measurements for that. Circumference I, measurements, body fat test. Probably I actually think if I, I mean, if I was to be training clients today still and were to start like my business all over again, I don't think I'd probably use the scale at all anymore. No. When I think about- like, I stopped using yeah, it in the back half of my career I didn't completely. Really, yeah. It's such a terrible way to, and I, this, I know this episode is geared towards women in general, but even for men, it's just not a good measure of progress because it, it can be very deceiving on yep. what, if you're moving in the right direction or not. You just, because you want to lose fat on your body, seeing the scale going down is not necessarily a good thing, you know, and seeing it go up is not necessarily a bad thing, right. you know? So it has a lot to do with your body composition and what is changing. To illustrate that point, Adam, I'm going to make a point that's going to trip people out, but it's hundred percent true. If you are listening to this right now and you lost no body fat, but you gained 10 pounds of muscle. So literally all you did was gain 10 pounds of lean body mass, no body fat loss whatsoever you have now become leaner as a percentage of body fat. Your body fat percentage, which is what matters, went down. Why? Because it is now a smaller percentage of your total your body total weight. Mass. And it'll look that way too. So what do I mean by that? Okay, a 200 pound man with 20 pounds of body fat is 10% body fat. A 100 pound man with 20 pounds of body fat, same amount of body fat, is 20% body fat. So it's a smaller person, same number of body fat, bigger person, same number of body fat, smaller percentage. So if you just gain muscle, you get leaner. And, and this is why, I yeah, know you guys had this too, female clients would come to you after you put them on a calorie surplus, having them lift weights, 60 days later, they come to you and they go, my coworkers are asking me how much weight I've lost. People think I lost 10 pounds. I tell them I gained two pounds or I lost no weight on the scale. Why, are, why does everybody think I lost weight? And it's this right here. You look leaner because you are leaner. Um, you're just not lighter. All right, the next one, um, is, uh, you know, you're probably looking, okay, you're listening to us talk. All right, what's a good workout? Here's a good rule of thumb. Avoid workouts that are marketed or geared towards women or girls. Workouts geared for women, workouts that are like burn this and sculpt that and power butt and whatever. Garbage. They're almost all garbage. Not all of them, but almost all of them are garbage. Almost all of them take strength training and water it down to such a point where they become uh, completely useless. So if you buy a workout and it's wrapped in pink or whatever, and it says it's for girls or for women, it's usually crap. It's usually a crappy workout. I mean, this is, uh, I think unpacking that. So people understand this, this is marketing in general. Yeah. It doesn't even, we don't even have to be talking about workouts for women. We can be talking about anything is, uh, you, you know, marketing is geared towards our insecurities to to poke at the things that mm -hmm. we're uh, we're uh, uneducated, uninformed about, that we're insecure about, and to show to provide a quick, fast, easy, cheap solution. Right, right. that's what 
we're all attracted to. So you have to be aware of that's what, if it hits you in your Instagram feed or your Facebook feed or gets email marketed to you or whatever, or jumps out in some 15 second promo video yeah. that this is what's going to do whatever magic. Workouts whatever, designed for women. Is, it's the corset and sweat butter. Is that's exactly, and they are, they are totally <laughs> marketing to our, weird. our insecurities. So you have to understand that. And, and almost anything worth working for or fighting for is hard. It takes time. It takes effort. It's not easy. It's not going to happen overnight or in 30 days. And this is the best approach to do that, which is strength training, slowly building muscle. That's all that stuff takes time. I used to tell, uh, so I had this one woman uh, I trained whose daughter uh, was in college and wanted to work out, saw her mom's results when she came to visit. And she said, my daughter uh, is looking for good workouts like online or whatever. Like, do you have any recommendations? I said, tell her that the, the most hardcore for men workouts are better, are going to give her the best results. So I said, tell her to find powerlifting workouts or tell her to find strength workouts for like for, for male bodybuilders. She's like, what? She's want to look like a guy. I said, no, no, it's just, those are well-written. The ones that are written for women is all about marketing. And they do a lot of what we talked about, the, you know, 70 reps, lightweight exercises that aren't effective. Mm -hmm. you know, that aren't effective, that kind of stuff. All right. Last, this is a extremely important factor with your workouts, which is prioritize strength. If you're getting stronger, you're moving in the right direction, hands down, bottom line. If you're lifting more weight for the same reps, or you're doing more reps with the same weight, you're moving in Good the right are happening. direction. Prioritize strength. In fact, if you want to look like a muscle mommy, Stop trying to look like a muscle mommy and just try to get stronger and you'll look like a muscle mommy. So this is to me the best metric to use, right? Like, and I, I like I, the one around the waist, not a bad one, even though even then, because that can fluctuate up and down with water retention, their period, things like that. Yep. I don't, not even a huge sure. fan of even that. I would rather go, let's measure and make sure we're getting stronger. Let's check that picture every month and that's it. And yeah. just mm -hmm. trust the process. And are you being, are you able to eat more? Because another one they tend to notice, right? If you put a lot of My effort, appetite's up, I'm eating more. Yes. Yes. You, mm -hmm. If you put a lot of effort in getting stronger and you are getting stronger, you'll start to see like your appetite increase and your ability to eat more calories than what you were before. So focusing on getting stronger to me is the single best metric that we can focus on when we're trying to do this. Now, uh, people always ask for what is considered strong, what is a good typical metric in terms of strength. Now, it's very individual. So I'm going to give a general answer. This does not apply to everybody, okay? So if you can't hit this, doesn't mean you're not doing great. If you're getting stronger, you're getting stronger. It's awesome. And you might surpass. A lot of women will surpass these numbers that I'm going to say. But here's some general metrics that the average woman, I would say, who's in relatively decent health, no major injuries, who's working out consistently and following a good workout, can aim for half of your body weight in bench press uh, on a bench press. So whatever you weigh, if you weigh uh, 140 pounds, 70 pounds on the bench press. Okay, so half your body weight in the bench press. You want to be able to squat your body weight. So whatever you weigh, can you do a full one rep squat of that? And then can you do about one and a quarter times? your weight in the deadlift. So if you weigh 100 pounds, 125 pound deadlift. Those are good general metrics that I would say most women in good health, uh, you know, all things being equal, could probably aim for and attain. And if you hit those numbers, you're doing damn good. Mm -hmm. You're doing pretty damn good. Now, I can think of, off the top <laughs> of my head, three programs that I find myself recommending to uh, a female client that wants to do this. What I would like us to do is, and th that would be anabolic, mm -hmm. power lift, and strong. Yes, or would be my go-to three. Now, depending on who I'm talking to, uh, would would dictate that. And I'd like, and this is my opinion. I like to hear what you guys think. So, if I have someone that's, you know, relatively new to lifting, and this is like the the first like real structured program to them, and I uh, building their metabolism, building strength, I'm gonna go the anabolic route. That's Maps like anabolic. That, that's kind of the go-to first thing. If you're somebody who's uh, been consistently lifting, you've been lifting for a, a relatively good amount of time, um, you've just never focused purely on strength, I would love to do something like power lift. Uh, if you're somebody who has been lifting a lot for a very long time and you're relatively strong and you have, and maybe even already kind of bench, squat, and deadlift, do some of those movements, uh, but have never done a just a strength-based program, 
I like strong because of all the unconventional things yeah, that are in there. It's going to be it's going to throw a curveball yeah. at the advanced lifter. That's right. kind of how I. I hundred percent agree. Now I will say this: <clears throat> if you're relatively healthy, no joint issues, and you can do basic strength training exercises with decent technique with light weight or whatever, you're not going to go wrong with any of these programs. Right, really yeah. not. Maps anabolic, map strong, or maps power lift. You can't go wrong. Uh, but what Adam said is much more specific, and I agree 100%. So what we're going to do is this. Uh, because we're talking about uh, building muscle, we're doing the muscle mommy thing. You mentioned those three programs. All of them right now for this episode, 50% off. Half off the normal price. So if you're interested in doing any of those, and they come with everything, exercises, sets, reps, exercise demos, just follow them as they're laid out. If you're interested, you go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. And then use the code on any of those programs for half off MM50. So MM50 will give you half off MAPS Anabolic or MAPS Strong or MAPS Powerlift. Or you could go back and get all three 50% off with that code. It's uh, Muscle Mommy Madness. There you go. Look, you can find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 